Good day, everyone. This is Dr. Jim Wallsmith. I'm the president of Vettel Diagnostics. I wanted to take a few minutes with you today and just share with you the secrets to making a good purchase of a digital radiography system. And I like to call this talk, <clears throat> pardon me, why numbers matter and what they mean in a clinical image. So we all want an easy to use system that's very, very fast, produces amazing image quality, and um, that's something everybody can have. And I'll just show you the way to evaluate a system and how we get there. So let's first break down uh, how we're gonna look at the talk today. So we're gonna look at the anatomy of a digital radiography system, which is composed of three parts. The detector panel, which is probably the most important, the computers and their components that support the detector panel and the software that lives on the computer that puts it all together and creates a nice image for us. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So image quality is um, determined by four primary characteristics on the digital radiography detector panel. And those are line pairs per millimeter, modulation transfer function, detector quantum efficiency, and bit, bit depth or grayscale level. So we'll take a look at all four of these items and we'll talk about a little bit about what they are and then also look at some clinical examples or clinical images that illustrate uh, the differences between different detector panels in these areas. So let's start with line pairs per millimeter and this is where the edge detail comes in. So here is an example of a line pair uh, phantom that's used uh, to take radiographs with. And then you uh, take your radiograph of the line pair phantom and determine at what level you can see distinct images. So here we can see distinct lines at one line per millimeter. And here at the other end, that would be five line pairs per millimeter, which are pretty hard to see. But on a digital system, this is something that allows for magnification and much greater detail. So uh, generally speaking, um, the higher the line pairs, at least up to five line pairs per millimeter is what's desired. Um, sometimes in digital systems, rather than referring to the edge detail in terms of line pairs per millimeter, they'll also talk about it as pixel pitch, which we'll talk about next. But just for a reference range, the optimum range that you'd like to see in a detector panel uh, would be three and a half to five line pairs per millimeter. Now, some manufacturers don't discuss it, uh, that edge detail in terms of line pairs per millimeter, but they talk about it in terms of pixel pitch. So here's just two examples of pixels of, of different sizes. And pixel pitch, the measurement itself, is either measured from the um, center diameter of the pixel, or it can be measured from the center of one pixel to the center of its neighbors. Uh, either one generally produces um, the same number with a few exceptions. Generally speaking, the smaller the pixels, the better the edge detail. So here we have smaller pixels and you can see clearly I can kind of make out the letter A, whereas with these larger pixels, I would not be able to resolve that. Um, when you're looking at these detector panel specification sheets, if they don't show line pairs per millimeter, then they should show a pixel pitch in microns. And we would like to see that in the range of 100 to 150, and actually now in the range of 100 to 120 ideally. So let's look at some clinical images that kind of illustrate this point. So on the left here, we have a, uh, these are radiographs taken of the same horse. Everything's the same, just two different detector panels. So here we have a 60 degree navicular DP view uh, taken with a Canon panel that has three line pairs per millimeter or a pixel pitch of 160. And the image here on the right is an Enduro HD and it has five line pairs per millimeter or a pixel pitch of 100. And I think you can notice that the edge detail is actually quite a bit better in the radiograph here on the right, uh, where we have a five line pair per millimeter image. So looking here at the edge detail, here at the edge of the navicular bone, you can see that that 
edge is quite clear and quite distinct, whereas when we look at the same area on the other radiograph, it's just a little milky, it's a little less distinct and a little less obvious. So that's line pairs per millimeter or pixel pitch. They're one and the same and they relate to edge detail. Now we'll talk about modulation transfer function. And this is where the clarity of the image comes in. Um, just uh, it's kind of a hard way to imagine. So I like to use the example of uh, regular sunglasses versus polarized sunglasses. So with regular sunglasses, you can't always see the object very well because there's a lot of glare. Uh, whereas if you have a polarized sunglass, it's able to eliminate the glare in the image that you want to look at it and you can see it much more clearly. And um, MTF does that. A higher MTF system is just going to have much greater clarity um, in the image and it's a measurement actually of of the image displayed, how much does it actually look like the true object you took the image of, if that makes sense. So another way to look at that would be to look at an MTF phantom. So here is a radiograph of, a, uh, of an MTF phantom taken with a detector panel that has a fairly low MTF. And you can see it's just kind of blurry and uh, not, not distinct or clear. And when you take a radiograph with a high MTF panel uh, of this uh, MTF uh, dummy or phantom, you can see that there's just much greater clarity. We can see more distinctly the areas between the black and the white lines. We can actually see this crosshatch here in the middle of the circle that we can't see here. So that's what I mean when we're talking about a, high, a higher MTF panel giving you greater image clarity. And as you're looking at panels, uh, some manufacturers don't publish their MTF. Uh, this is one of the things that uh, kind of leads to the expense of a detector panel, um, or they might publish it at different levels. So uh, it should have a uh, MTF of at least 30% at two line pairs per millimeter, or 60% at one line pair per millimeter. And generally this is the uh, specification you're looking for. What is it at one line pair per millimeter, which is a, a finer, a more refined image. Okay, so now let's look at some clinical images and see how that displays. So here on the left side of the screen, we've got a lateral foot radiograph taken with a detector panel that has an MTF of 42% at one line pair per millimeter. And now the image on the right uh, also taken with the Enduro HD, uh, we have a same type of radiograph, but the detector panel has a 70% MTF at one line pair per millimeter. And you'll just see it's much more clear. You can see edges better. You can see bone trabecular detail better. Uh, all around, you just get a much greater sense of clarity in the image. Okay, so we've talked about edge detail and line pairs per millimeter and pixel pitch. Now we've talked about image clarity, which is measured as MTF or modulation transfer function. And now we're gonna talk about detector quantum efficiency. And detector quantum efficiency is kind of a way to measure the quality of the electronics in the system. The higher the quality of the electronics, the less noise those electronics create. And then that noise therefore um, won't show up in your images. I think a little bit like uh, music on a radio uh, receiver. And if you imagine that um, the receiver had very high quality electronics, then as you move the dial in between the channels, you'd hear a much uh, lower level of static um, in, the, in the speakers between uh, the channels than if it was a lower quality electronics that had more noise in the system. So when we're looking at images, noise actually shows up as, as graininess. So uh, here we'll look at some uh, examples, again, um, using a phantom. So here is a um, radiograph taken of a DQE phantom with a low DQE detector panel. And here's one taken with a high DQE detector panel. And you'll notice that as you look in, at the high DQE panel, these shapes within the phantom are just more clear to see 
than they are in the low DQE. And you just see this graininess, which is what's associated with the noise uh, as a result of lower quality electronics in the detector panel. So see, there's the graininess there and it's much more clear here. When you're looking at the specification sheets, you'd like to see that DQE be at least 65% at zero line pairs per millimeter. So now let's look at some clinical images. Here is a lateral canine thorax taken with a low DQE detector panel. And here is one taken with a high DQE detector panel. And what you'll notice here is again, a much greater clarity when you're looking at the pulmonary vasculature and even the vasculature as it's superimposed over the cardiac silhouette. And notice that when we're looking at the vasculature, we can see these blood vessels very clearly. On the lower DQE panel, we can see them if we kind of strain to look and the, and the data is there, we can actually see those blood vessels there. It's just much more difficult to see because of the graininess associated with a lower DQE detector panel. Okay, finally in our anatomy of the detector panel, let's talk about bit, bit depth or contrast detail. And this is related to how many shades of gray are in the raw image. So a 12-bit panel will have 4,000 shades of gray. A 14-bit panel will have 16,000 shades of gray. And a 16-bit panel will have 65,000 shades of gray. Uh, Grayscale is something you want. Um, 16 bits is the highest that's possible. But the higher the grayscale you have in the image, the more data that you are giving the software to process very subtle differences in the density of different tissues as they're opposed to each other. So the higher the grayscale level, you're going to get better images, uh, especially if you're looking in abdomens or areas where you have a lot of tissues of very similar density uh, touching each other and you wanna be able to distinguish one from the other. All modern detector panels uh, on the market today are 16-bit panels and this is the state of the art. More recently, there has been the introduction of an idea of breaking detector panels into separate categories. And you'll see some manufacturers talk about premium or tier one panels versus economy or tier two panels. Um, this is really somewhat subjective and it depends on who's trying to sell you what panel. And um, as we said at the beginning of the talk, why I like to call it numbers matter, is because you want to avoid the marketing speak and just look at the numbers, kind of just look at the facts. So for a panel to be a premium panel, it should have the following characteristics. A pixel pitch of 100 to 150 microns. And I would say now more, more recently, it should be between 100 and 120. We want to see an MTF of 60% or greater at one line per, uh, per cycle or millimeter a DQE of 65% of greater at zero line pairs per millimeter, bit depth of at least 16 bits. That's the grayscale we just talked about, 65,000 shades of gray. Uh, scintillator that cesium iodide. We haven't talked about this, but uh, like in film where you have rare earth and regular screens and they uh, affect the amount of radiation that's required to create the image and the clarity. Um, Today, scintillators um, are preferred in the cesium iodide division and not GADOX or gadolinium oxide, which are gonna be noisier types of images and also require more radiation to create the image. The panel should offer some drop test data or warranty. And you'd like to see that the panel has been drop tested for at least 70 centimeters, preferably a meter. And ideally, the panel would also be warrantied. So if it drops from um, a level within its drop test data, you would be covered under warranty. And then finally, some moisture barrier uh, or incursion protections. These are called IPX scores or IP scores. And you would like to see that number be at least four. Uh, and this, this alludes to how much protection there is if the panel gets wet. Okay, so those are the components of a detector panel. Now let's move on to the rest of a digital radiography system, which is the computer. 
So the computer is in several parts as well, and we'll just look at them one at a time. So the first is the processor or central processing unit. Um, this determines how fast uh, data moves around, how fast the computer can think, if you will. And when you're buying processors, there's no such thing as too fast. Um, I kind of think of them as like pipelines. So maybe if we have I5, I7, and I9, maybe this is the I5, this is the I7, this is the I9. And it just means the larger the pipe, the more data that can flow through it in a given amount of time. So uh, we've already alluded to this, that this is how data is moved around on the computer. In today's systems, the minimum processors uh, would be an I5, preferably you'd get an i7 or where available or when available, the i9s. Again, you wanna have that bigger pipeline so things move faster. The next spec you wanna look at in the computer is RAM or random access memory. And this is actually where the thinking happens in the computer. And um, there's no such thing as too much RAM. And it's about a thousand times faster than the CPU processor itself. Generally speaking, um, you want to have a minimum of eight gigs, but with today's newer um, software programs, especially those that have artificial intelligence uh, and they're more robust, it would be better to have 16 to 32 gigs of byte, gigabytes of RAM. Okay, just a few other things on computers, hard drives, again, no such thing as too big of a hard drive because this just allows you to store more data in the same place. Um, solid state hard drives are the preferred ones. They're more rugged, uh, more reliable, uh, but you will pay a little bit more for them. And in some situa situations, you may want swappable hard drives. If people, for example, two different people want to share a digital radiography system, but they want to use different software platforms or keep their data separate, um, some hard drives can be taken in and out very easily from the computer that's running the DR system. Um, then probably one of the most important points is the monitor. So the monitor should be at least two megapixels in resolution. That's 1920 by 1080 dots per inch or DPI. They should have a minimum contrast ratio of 1,001. And most monitors these days have a contrast ratio of 10,001 or better. Um, brightness, this is very important. It should be at least 300 candelas, um, but preferably 350 or 400 candelas. Um, this is what you're paying for in a monitor is its capacity to be bright. And the brighter the monitor can be, the easier it is on your eyes to look at the images and see contrast and edge detail and things of that nature. Um, most modern software now is set up to run on a touch screen. And so you'd like to have a touch screen and preferably you would have a touch screen monitor that um, allows you to even have a gloved hand on um, and still have all the touch screen features. So that's our little story about all the different aspects of a computer. Finally, let's talk about software which is really where it all comes together. And um, the most important thing is it should be very easy to use. It should be um, intuitive. You shouldn't have to um, go back and read the manual, manual every time you wanna do something. So good software should be open architecture and design, meaning that one software program is not gonna create conflicts with another software program on the same computer and that you can use multiple software programs on a single computer and not have to have one computer for one thing and another computer for something else. The software should have a web interface inside it that gives you easy access to online support. And additionally, it should have onboard help menus. So if you don't have access to the internet, there's still gonna be drop down menus if you have a question or drop down menus that direct you to training videos, for example. All modern software will be intelligent and will have artificial um, intelligence built into the system that helps you be more precise or helps you be more efficient um, as you're using your system. And then also it should have productivity aids like positioning guides, image communication tools so that you can uh, send your images via email or a web viewer or do a DICOM send to someone's PAC system. 
It should be able to give you advice on exposure settings while you're taking your radiographs and also automatically generate reports for you that you can send to your clients. So wrapping up, um, numbers matter. There are objective specifications you can use that are gonna separate the quality between different digital radiography systems. Um, if you understand these numbers, and hopefully I've been able to explain what they mean uh, in the terms of a clinical image, then that assures you that you're gonna get the best value when you make a purchase decision. Thank you for your time and attention and be happy to take any questions uh, at this point. Okay, if I can be of any further assistance to you, just please contact me by going to Vettel Diagnostics. Here's the web address or here's the phone number. Thank you very much for your time and your attention and have a great day.